with the Indigo Disc DLC release in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We have seen both new and maturing Pokemon perform very well in the Gen 9 Overuse metagame. While there's only been one quick ban so far, there are many Pokemon that are deemed controversial and potentially ban worthy in the metagame. The Smoke and Oil Council might potentially ban 11 of these powerful Pokemon at once as an attempt to stabilize the metagame. But I personally think this would not be a very good idea. So let's go over why they might do this and the potential downsides it could bring to the current metagame. So that is not, not a joke. Uh, the council member NGNP suggested the Coco Loco method on the Gen 9 Obvious metagame. Not gonna go through this whole thread. What I will say how the Coco Loco method works, as I am aware, is uh, yeah, in this case, they will ban 11 Pokemon. You can see all of them on the screen right here. We'll go over them in a second as well. So these 11 Pokemon, uh, or at least or some of them, will get banned at the same time. Quick banned. Uh, and they will get retested one by one. So basically, they will get retested in a metagame where these Pokemon would not be present to see if they are actually broken. Now, this is a very drastic uh, method, of course. Uh, it might not happen. It might It might happen. We will going to have to see. However, personally, I think this is not a great idea. Uh, before I get into that, there is a survey up right now where you can vote on the metagame and these Pokemon as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of these Pokemon are in this in this uh, survey. So if you want to vote on the Coco Loco, also it's, it's also you can vote on the Coco Loco method, Coco Loco method right here. So whether you're for or against it. So the reason I'm saying that I don't think it's a good idea to actually implement this. Uh, there are a couple reasons for this. First of all, I think, uh, I still think that terrestrialization is a big problem with these Pokemon. They, you know, we have 11 Pokemon right here, right? Uh, superior, solely here because of terrestrialization. I mean, without terrestrialization, it would basically be a nerfed version of a Gen 7 uh, superior because it has no coverage anymore. Stero Stellar is basically what breaks this Pokemon at the moment. It's solely Terra Stellar. I think we can agree on that. We have Roaring Moon. I would argue also terrestrialization. Not only does Terra Flying give it a great typing to actually get a free setup opportunity, but it also gives it stab on acrobatics, which can basically one hit kill or two hit kill anything in a metagame. It has great coverage. Full Corona, uh, this is also a Pokemon that this is just a great Terra user, very unpredictable with its different Terra types and, uh, you know, access to co coverage with Terra Blast can basically pick and choose its counterplay, that's why it got banned uh, last time. Uh, we look at these maybe Pokemon, Enamorous, literally the same thing as Superior, Terra Stella with Choice Scarf is basically what makes this Pokemon so good with Terra Blast at the moment, King Gambit. I am still of the opinion, I've said it multiple times, if you've been watching for some time, you you know my opinion about this. I think terrestrialization is what makes King Gambit so broken at the, at the moment. Yes, it is still good without Terra, but Terra gives it so many safe setup opportunities that can quickly let it snowball out of control. Uh, and yeah, Iron Boulder, you could maybe make an argument for Terra, Terra fighting, for example. But I don't think it breaks the Pokemon. So, you know, that's more than half, I think. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five. That's basically half of the Pokemon. I would say Terra is the issue right there. As it stands, these are the maybe Pokemon, so we might not even see these banned. How did this guy, by the way, avoid the ban hammer again, if it, if it does happen? Uh, an, a topic for another day. So, um, that's my first reason. I think Terrestrialization. I mean, they said they were going to suspect this a while ago. I can understand with like the DLC releases and, you know, broken Pokemon and stuff. It's tough to make time for that. But I still think it should be suspect tested again. Especially before we make any drastic changes by permanently banning some Pokemon. I mean, we still have some Pokemon that are solely banned because of utilization. Pokemon that come to my direction, you're lucky. Yeah, that's one reason. The second reason is adaptability. Now, first of all, it's going to take a while to actually adapt to the metagame with 
you know, 11, let's say all of these are getting banned, right? With 11 Pokemon getting banned, that's first of all, then reintroducing one by one, it's also going to have some drastic changes when these Pokemon are introduced over time. And I think with 11 Pokemon gone, or with a lot of them gone at least, we might see a ripple effect where we have other Pokemon that are maybe not as good right now, might make a comeback, or a comeback, or maybe they get broken. One Pokemon in, I have particularly in mind that talked about this yesterday is Ogre Pond Wellspring. I mean, a lot of these Pokemon have a very good matchup against Ogre Pond Wellspring. You know, maybe we get these banned. You know, Ogre Pond Wellspring was a very controversial Pokemon as well before the DLC. Maybe it rises up again and now becomes that, you know, you know it's, it's a girl, but it becomes that guy. And now we want to ban that Pokemon because it's broken. See what I mean? Maybe not Ogre Pond Wellspring, but that's an example. My last take is the, just the time it takes. This suspect progress or process takes a lot of time. Usually suspect tests last around two weeks. Uh, so let's say each of these Pokemon, they get tested one by one, two weeks each. Uh, let's say back to back, so no, no pauses, no downtime. Back to back two weeks for every Pokemon. That would still be around almost six months so half a year just to test all of these pokemon and maybe you know maybe there's one pokemon that's the last pokemon we can test maybe iron boulder for example and we find out oh it wasn't actually broken so we just banned iron boulder for six almost six months because we thought it was broken but it wasn't actually for the record i don't even think a lot of these are actually broken I think Iron Boulder is fine. I think Raging Bolt is also fine. Same goes for Enamorous. Uh, I'm still saying King Gambit is fine. Just because sterilization is the problem. Golden Go... Yo, you that should have been gone a, lo a long time ago. These Pokemon are basically... Uh, these three former Ubers doing the same thing uh, that they did in the past. Gouching Fire. I think even Gouching Fire is fine. Unless maybe on Sun Teams it can be a little overwhelming. But outside of Sun Teams, I think this Pokemon is not broken to play against. So uh, those are my quick thoughts. To recap, I think Terrestrialization is a big problem of most of these Pokemon being considered quote-unquote broken. Second, there might be new threats that rise up as a result of all these Pokemon being banned in the same time. So we have to ban those Pokemon potentially again. And unbend them as well, which is also not healthy. Uh, and third, it just takes a very long time. So we might have Pokemon that get banned for a very long time, even though they're not actually broken. Which I think takes a lot away from metagame variety. Especially when we ban 11 Pokemon in a row, maybe even more with uh, you know, the ripple effect I talked about. So those are my reasons why I don't think we should be considering the Coco Loco method. You know, if you agree, let me know. If you disagree, also let me know. Maybe an argument uh, I might have not thought about. I mean, this is a thread open for discussion, right? So I'm just giving my thoughts about it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.